This is the BMW i8. You probably already know that because the i8 has been out for a couple of years now. And you probably already know all of the particulars. Hybrid electric powertrain, zero to 60 in just over four seconds. Can travel up to 20 miles on electric power alone, all wheel drive. But I bet you didn't know all of the i8's crazy details. So today I've borrowed this i8 from a reader in Connecticut and I'm going to show them to you. And then I'm gonna take it for a drive and determine whether I think it's worth BMW's $150,000 asking price. On the outside, by now, most people know that there's this hole that air can just travel right through. But did you know that there's the same thing underneath? In back, some of the coolest features are the brake lights and the turn signal lights. Not quite as cool as the trunk space. Even though the entire hatch opens up, the trunk is confined to this tiny little area in the far back. One of the most interesting features inside the car, if you move the transmission lever over to sport mode, and then you decide, nah, you want to be in eco mode, and you press eco, the transmission lever pops back into drive like some sort of unseen ghost is moving it. Here's another weird quirk, the window doesn't go all the way down. This is as far as it goes. There's about two inches of window still remaining. So you can't really put your elbow up here because it's really uncomfortable. Another cool thing, like most modern BMWs, the i8 has the touch controller pad in the center console. So you don't have to scroll around and click on stuff. Instead, you can just write it and it appears on the screen. One of the quirks is simply getting in the i8. The owner tells me that you're supposed to sit down first, then slide your legs and then close the door. However, the owner also tells me there is no easy way to get in the back seats. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How do you get out of a BMW i8? Well, there's no door handle. Instead, you press a button and then the door just opens up. And then the gauge cluster shows you a cool little picture to let you know that your door is open. There's also a second door opener in the rear half of the front door, maybe for the rear passengers or in an emergency. I, I don't know. Okay, another thing you might be wondering, I know I am, can you drive around with the doors up? I don't know, let's find out. <laughs> yes, you can. Another cool thing, there's a little channel between the USB port and the center console where you can store your phone. And here's the really cool part, it even works when the lids are closed. The gauge cluster is super cool. It's a full LCD screen. Now when you're in sport, it's red and it gives you your RPMs, Urgh. but then you move it over to comfort and it gives you the percentage power that you're using. Put it in Eco Pro and it limits your percentage power to just 50% so you get the best possible mileage. Something else I love about the i8, because it has an electric mode, it can drive around and make absolutely no noise at all, like so. You have to admit, it's kind of hilarious to see a vehicle that looks like this driving around with absolutely no noise coming out of any of its orifices. So the i8 has some very unique features, some cool and some weird. But how does it drive? Now it's time to get on the road and find out. And as always, click the link below to check out my column on autotrader.com slash oversteer for more of my thoughts on the driving experience. All right, we're driving the i8 here. The first thing you hear, we're in, I'm in sport mode. The first thing you hear is all this engine noise. It sounds like a V8, of course it isn't. And all that is fake and it's piped in through the speakers. Man, listen to that. So all that is fake. Most of it is, yeah. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, I guess that's not really how a, a three cylinder engine sounds. Yeah. God, that's, it sounds great though, doesn't it? Ooh. It's quick, a little, little quicker than most of the three cylinders I've driven in the past. The ride is reasonably compliant. It's not so bad, yeah. it's not so rough. So I'm in sport mode here, and sport mode is mostly gas engine, but also electric, but the real key is sport mode charges the battery. The owner told me he's only plugged it in a few times because he drives it in sport mode, so I can just charge it right up from that. 
Let me just kind of stand out. I feel like I'm in the future. Do you feel like you're in the yeah. future when you're driving yeah. this thing? The handling, it's it's nice and precise. It feels yeah. it feels good. Uh, so let's do comfort briefly. It feels more than happy just to cruise into in the uh, at a normal speed. Yeah. It's like, yeah, whatever, it's totally fine. A lot of exotic cars, especially ones that look this crazy, when you're going slow, if you can tell it wants to go faster. The Viper is like, come on, why are we doing this? All right, let's give this a shot and see. Whoa, that's more like it. That is quick, damn. Wow, that's impressive. Oh my God, boy, the handling is great. It really feels incredibly planted. There's, of course, no body roll at all. The transmission is insanely fast. And like you said, you don't feel upshifts or downshifts. They just sort of occur. Um, wow, that is crazily fast. It's amazing the car we were driving around the parking lot 10 minutes ago with, with no noise at all suddenly is like this monster when we're on the road here. It's crazy. I, I love how the, the sound is. God, I hate to admit it because I know it's fake, but I love it. It sounds like a nice V8. BMW has won me over with their fake sound. You know, this car gets a lot of press about its technology and its powertrain, plug-in, its 20 miles of electric range, whatever. Uh, and not a lot of people have talked that much about just how well it drives. I think that kind of gets lost in the shuffle with this car, but kudos to BMW for making this thing actually drive so well in addition to being uh, all these other futuristic technology things. Despite the fact that it has back seats and all this futuristic hybrid stuff, it actually is a pretty impressive sports car. It drives, it drives great. In a world where when you think electric vehicle and you think Nissan Leaf, right. this is like, no, there's, you can have fun actually. So is the i8 worth $150,000? Absolutely. It's fun, it's cool, it's futuristic, it's well equipped. But most importantly, before the i8, car enthusiasts had come to fear the rising tide of incoming electric vehicles. But the i8 and other cool electric cars like the Tesla Model S are proof that the future doesn't have to be boring and it doesn't have to be ugly. And most importantly, there is a place for exotic, awesome sports cars and car enthusiasts enthusiasts in a world without big, loud gasoline engines.